Hi, friends. I missed you last week. Unfortunately, I sold my voice to a sea witch, and it took the better part of a week to get it back. But what I've been waiting to show you is these. I have these tote bags in my craft room. I actually have no idea where they came from, which is weird because it's my craft room. Someone probably gave them to me, but I have absolutely no memory of it. However they got here, I thought they'd be fun to decorate. So let's get to it. First, there are a bunch of these drawstring sort of bags. They work however drawstring bags work. They're about the size of a shoebox-ish. And the fabric is a sort of canvasy material. The inside is empty, obviously. But let's just get to painting. First, let me sketch out the easiest design in the world. A popsicle. But I'm doing a popsicle because I'm going to be using this brush-on fabric paint. And I've never used this before, so rather than going for something complicated like I usually do, I wanted to try something a little simpler. I've used slick fabric paint and matte fabric paint, but not this brush on paint. And I'm not sure how different this will be. Recognize this color scheme yet? I stuck a piece of cardboard inside the bag so that no paint would bleed through to the back. Then, using a small brush, I went in very carefully around the edges to try and make a nice crisp outline. And this worked pretty well, except you ever get so focused on the details that you forget the big picture? Yeah, I didn't actually mean to take the pink all the way down. Crap, I'll fix that later. After the first coat, this paint isn't too bad at coverage, which is good since I barely mixed enough paint, but it is weirdly sparkly, and it never goes away, so it's not just because the paint's wet. I legitimately have no idea why it sparkles. I've looked all over the bottles and can't find anywhere that it's listed as glitter paint. I went in with a lighter and darker version of the pink to make a gradient from the top to the bottom. The paint blended pretty well, which might be since this is literally the same color, just with more or less white in it. But I noticed if you go over one area too many times while it's still wet, it will start to pull up and move around the paint underneath. It wasn't a super big problem, except when trying to cover up my pink mistake with this super light minty green. That did require a pretty annoying routine of laying down a coat and then waiting an hour or so for it to dry and then adding another coat. And while the coverage is pretty nice on the white of the fabric, it's a little transparent over other colors. So this took about three coats before I could even begin to blend in darker colors, which also required more coats and waiting for it to dry. Obviously, at this point, you can tell this is a watermelon popsicle. A pretty crooked watermelon popsicle. In my mind, this is like an ice creamy type of watermelon popsicle. Kind of like a fudge sickle, but watermelon. I don't know if these actually exist, but I bet if they did, they'd be amazing. They would taste like that fake watermelon that always tastes way better than actual watermelon. Unpopular opinion, but watermelon is too watery for me. I need, like, watermelon concentrate. In the whole painting, there was this one little spot where the paint sort of bled on the side. So after painting on the seeds, I added a black outline to cover that up. And then, because I also accidentally splattered a little bit of paint with the brush, I added some pink and green sprinkles. And this one is done. I really like it. The paint was pretty easy to work with and seems to have sunken into the fabric rather than just sitting on top. So it moves and stretches with the bag pretty well. It is sort of scratchy feeling, but I don't know if that's from the mysterious glitter or not. The second type of bag that I have is these extra large tote bags. They're so big that they don't fit in the frame. I didn't feel like finding a tape measure, so they're two and a half hands tall and four and a half hands wide. Jeez, I might as well have measured it in sauce packets. I'm not sure what this fabric is, except it's super thin and see-through and doesn't like the iron. The first time I tried to iron it, it sort of melted away. So I don't know if this is made out of straight cotton candy or 
cobwebs or what? I was able to iron a new one on the lowest heat setting, but just to be sure, I put a paper towel down so the iron didn't directly touch its skin. Since this fabric is so insanely thin, rather than sketch on it, I sketched onto a piece of paper first and then just traced it onto the bag. Now that I know what to expect with this paint, I do want to do something more complicated. In case you don't recognize him in his slightly altered form, this is Kenicorn. No, I am absolutely not over my obsession with him. He's just so cute. I've showed him to a few of my friends and most of them just kind of stare at me blankly, but I'm used to that. This version of Kenicorn is sitting in a goofy, splooty position and he has an actual eye this time instead of a hole. <gasps> I just realized while editing this that I forgot his goatee. I hated that anyway. Not only is this Kenicorn looking a bit more detailed in the facial area, he also has a couple of new accessories. Some books to read about horses and trucks, and of course a guitar so he can sing at people. Can a unicorn play a guitar? I mean, I guess if he can get that vest on, then he can probably find a way to hold and strum a guitar. This is obviously going to need a second coat since you can still see the holy texture of the fabric. And while I do that, I think I'm also going to change one of the yellows of the hair since two of them look a little too similar, and I'm going to lighten the body and hoof color. Much better. There's absolutely no difference. I'm not sure yet what I want to do about the outline situation, whether I want to outline everything in black or just the outside, so I'm going to work on the background while I ponder. And I severely underestimated just how much paint this would take that paint dwindling. After using up all of my pink paint on another batch to finish up the first coat and add a second, it's still looking patchy. I guess I'll figure out how to deal with that later. To add some details and shadows, I used Posca paint markers because I really didn't feel like mixing up a bunch more colors in tiny little amounts. I'm not quite sure about some of the color choices here, but I did the best with what I had. And then, since I finally decided what I want to do, I used my tiniest Posca to outline everything. Ah, oh, he's looking so good. That really just brought everything together. Now, let's deal with this background situation. I decided to add a thicker outline to one side of him, kind of like a shadow but something about it just looks off. I stared at this for so long and adjusted it quite a few times and I never could figure out why it looked weird. So I just moved on. Now since I used up all of my pink paint, I had to get a little creative. I used all the rest of my watermelon colors of paint mixed together and added red and purple and white in small amounts until I got a sort of close enough match. I was using a small round brush to get really close to the black outline, and I noticed that this sort of worked the paint into the little holes, way better than the flat brush that I'd used before. And that made for much better coverage. So I grabbed a slightly bigger round brush, said a prayer, and went over the whole background one more time. Thank goodness that worked. Last, just to add a little something, I took some glitter Poscas and drew on some stars. You can barely see these in the camera, and only slightly more in person, but it doesn't look worse, so that's fine. And this one is done. The paint definitely is thicker and less scratchy on this one. It almost even feels a little tacky. I'm not sure how well the paint would hold up on this fabric, but I don't really care because I'd never actually let anyone use this. Not after four days of painting. The other thing I noticed is that the majority of the painting isn't as noticeably sparkly. The background is for sure, but most of Kenicorn is just kind of glossy. I still don't understand this paint. That's all I had time for this week. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.